What's up guys, I'm here back with another YouTube video. But before I get into the topic of this video, let me first of all give a huge thank you to all of you who showed me some love on my last video, which was a compilation of my college reactions. I was so pleasantly shocked that I got more than 40,000 views on that one video. I guess people just love seeing me get rejected, right? <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you for all the kind comments and messages I received. Y'all are truly the reason that I'm making these kind of videos. So I got so many comments in my last video asking me one thing. My stats, my GPA, my SAT scores, my ACT scores, and my SAT subject scores. So in this video, that's exactly what you're gonna get. Now, my advice to you guys is to take this video with a grain of salt. For some of you guys might know that the college admissions process is a really subjective one. So the scores that helped me get in might not help you in the same way. Nevertheless, I hope you guys get something out of this video. And without further ado, let's get started. So let's talk about the general SAT test first. So I spent a lot of time studying for the SAT. I went to a summer school program for SAT test strategies and tips and practice. I bought practice books to test myself and to um, try to improve my scores. In the fall of my junior year, I took the SAT and I got a 1520. If you break down the sections, I got a 790 on math and a 730 on reading. So a 1520 was already pretty good in my standards, but in order to get kind of that extra boost to my college application, I wanted to take it one more time to see um, if I could get it any higher. So in January of my junior year, I took the SAT another time. I ended up with a 1530, which translated to uh, 800 in math, which I was super happy about and a 730 again on the reading and writing section. So at that point, I was pretty happy with the 1530, but I was a little bit disappointed with my reading and writing scores not changing at all between the two tests that I took. So after hearing some of my friends say that the ACT might be better for people who are better at math, I decided to take the ACT that year in March. Now you guys should know, I did not do any studying for this test. I was completely relying on the strategies I had learned from the SAT summer school prep, as well as from the multiple SAT tests that I had taken. So surprisingly enough, having had no experience taking the ACT beforehand, I actually did pretty well on the ACT the first time I took it. I got a score of a 34, which was composed of a 36 in English, a 35 in mathematics, a 33 in science, and a 32 in reading. So after getting my score of a 34, I looked up a conversion chart to see what this score translated to in SAT scores. I realized that a 34 on the ACT is almost as good as a 1530 on the SAT. So at this point, I was like, I took so many practice tests to get this score on the SAT. But in the end, I got almost the same score on the ACT without any studying. So immediately, I registered myself for the next available date of testing for the ACT. Now, things around this time of the year were kind of getting hectic as I was a junior going into my summer. So I was encouraged to work on my college apps, my essays, and I was also doing an internship at the same time. Nonetheless, I found some free time to study for the ACT, whether it was doing a couple of problems a day or sitting down to take a three hour test. So I ended up getting a 35 on this ACT test, which composed of a 36 in English, a 36 in mathematics, a 36 in science, and a 32 in reading. So as you can imagine, I was super happy with this 35, and I ended up only submitting this score and not submitting my 1530 to most colleges that I applied to. So another big test you can take that can help your application is called the SAT subject test. So if you don't know what the SAT subject test is, it's a standardized test over one topic of whatever you choose to take. So the first one that I took was Math 2, which included pre-cal, a lot of algebra, and some calculus. My dad, whom you guys may have seen in my last video, is a huge math geek, so he helped me prepare for this subject test. So keep in mind that this was my first ever SAT subject test, so I had no idea how I did after I took it. So when I heard that I got an 800, which is a perfect score on the test, I could not have been more ecstatic. 
So in school, I love chemistry. It's probably one of my favorite subjects and I had a really good teacher my junior year. So the next subject test that I signed up for was the following summer in June and I took the SAT subject test for chemistry. I got a 780 on this test and I was pretty happy with that. So right after learning the results of my SAT chemistry test, I decided to sign myself up for the SAT physics test. Now I should note that I am not the best at physics. Um, I did maintain a pretty good grade in the AP class my sophomore year and I got a four on the AP physics exam, but only after a lot of studying and practice. So I by no means thought I was good at physics. But remember my math geek of a dad? He's also a genius at physics. So now in the summer of my junior year, along with preparing my college applications, writing my college essays, and studying for the ACT, I was also learning from my dad about SAT physics. And after endless nights learning with my dad um, and doing multiple practice tests, I was relieved to find out that I got a perfect score on the SAT physics test as well. I guess it goes to say something that on the two subject tests that my dad helped me with, I got a full score on, and on the test that I studied myself, I got a 780 on. But ultimately, I was happy with these three scores, and I sent these to all the colleges I applied to. So now let's move to the last kind of subtopic of this video, GPA and class rank. So I go to a pretty small high school. We have around 360 kids in our entire graduating class this year. So despite the multiple explanations that I've read online and heard from other people, I still don't know exactly how the GPA system works across high schools around the country. Nonetheless, I'll go ahead and give you my GPA because it really means nothing to me. So my school operates on a weighted GPA scale. So on that system, my GPA is a 4.58. As for class rank, I am salutatorian of my high school. Okay, y'all, that's all the stats and scores I have to share with you guys. So before you guys leave, I just wanted to let you know that these academic statistics and scores are only one part of the college admissions process. In my opinion, your extracurriculars and what you do in your free time are a lot more important than your scores will ever be on your college application. So one more thing, I will be creating a series of videos of college application advice with my friend Michelle, whom I met at a UT Austin Business Honors Program dinner. She's currently deciding between Stanford and Yale, which wow, it must be really nice to have that kind of decision. She and I have been making videos on college application advice that we wish we would have had when we were in the process ourselves. These videos will be uploaded to this channel, so be sure to subscribe down below and leave any comments of any advice or tips that you would like to hear. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.